this is a very compelling story because it's it's not exactly about what you see in the surface on the narrative. It's a lot about in this film. For Alejandro, it was very clear that nature is oblivious of whatever happens to the character. Na nature is so much bigger than that. So nature continues its presence and life. And these little ants, they are there and they have their own tragedy. You had these two stallions, Leonardo DiCaprio character and the Tom Hardy character, Glass and Fitzgerald, you know, butting heads with each other, both arrogant, both wanting to control things, and through the course of the film, both of them lose control. And so each of them gets a lesson in humility also. I think for me as a sound designer, well, I also get a lesson in, in humility in, in the sense that what's presented to us by the real world in the way of sounds is so rich. What we need to do is just figure out how to select which kinds of sounds to use at any given moment in a movie. It's not about, I think, usually what we think it's about or want it to be about, which is us creating sounds, us you know, manipulating sounds. I think as, as sound designers and editors and mixers, we need to be humble enough to realize the magic in the sounds that are around us and use them. was shot in a very particular way. The light was very, very reduced. It was scarce, uh, three o'clock, there was no light. So we have windows of one hour and a half to shoot very complex scenes with hundreds of extras or very difficult, uh, intimate emotions in a very small amount window of light and time with very extreme weather conditions. Another great thing about working with Alejandro is that he doesn't believe in, you know, firing all the ammunition at once. He leaves space for uh, the location and the animal characters, you know, the birds and the landscape, really, to, to speak. For me, there are wonderful spaces where there's very little dialogue, where the landscape and nature really does become a character in this movie and Alejandro opened the door for that to happen. And likewise, there are purely musical moments where you hear, hear very little in the way of sound design or sound effects. And there are some great places where you are hearing both sound design and music, and very often you can't even tell the difference between the two. I was grabbing pieces of sound from production, from the dailies, and whatever I had there that sounded to me interesting. And I wanted to grab this production sound, not because they had a meaning of what they were saying, but it was because they had awaked, because the, the, the resonance or the acoustics had awaked. And, so and I did some processing on that in order to blend it with some music that I was, again, thinking about music more like part of the sound design. It was not the, oh, here we go, the score. Now it's the score. No, because at that point, when that actually happens, you feel you're watching a film, you're looking at a movie. Martin knew very well that Alejandro wanted this film to be authentic, to sound authentic, but without being in a kind of straitjacket of authenticity where you can't be expressive at all or emotionally evocative. But it had to be absolutely natural, organic, authentic, believable. We had to get the impression that it was Glass's point of view. And so we had to find a way to do that. And I wouldn't think very much about 
manipulating sounds. What I would think about is finding sounds and recording sounds that um, have the kind of drama in them that he's looking for. Uh, for instance, in the bear sequence, when you're doing uh, creature vocalizations, it's a little like you're directing an actor in the sense that you can uh, make this bear actor kind of overact, uh, which is a little bit what I did on the first pass, or you can get the bear to underplay it, which is exactly what Alejandro wanted. He didn't want every moment filled with a bear growl or grunt or vocalization. He wanted there to be some empty spaces, which there would be uh, in a situation like that. You know, the bear is not going to be you know, raging every uh, moment for this uh, several minutes that uh, the attack goes on. One term that Alejandro likes to use, which he made up, is uh, kakayanga. And uh, what it means is essentially of noise, um, sounds that you wouldn't necessarily ever design into a scene, but nevertheless are completely believable for that given location. And so very often he'd say, you know, I think this uh, moment needs more kakayanga meaning uh, some kind of off-screen noise uh, that doesn't necessarily speak directly to what's happening on screen, but has some kind of emotional resonance with what's happening there and also performs the function of making it more believable because that's the way the real world works. Everything isn't controlled and precise and predictable and very often there are things happening off-screen that you wouldn't have anticipated. And so it, it, you know, Kakayanga makes a scene play more naturally and more believable very often. Obviously, you could go overboard with it and have constant uh, kind of non sequitur noises off camera, but uh, as long as you, you know, don't do it too often, I, I think it's a great approach. What's not to be proud of in this film? I mean, the film is just an amazing thing that happens and it's there. The more that you feel like you, you're very grateful, a director of this size with a film this size invites you to work on that. And then you have the opportunity to collaborate in every area of, of the film making is collaborate with people that can really understand where the film is aiming what the film is, the size of the film, how different this film is. I can say that the results are very eloquent and if you can express that as part of the bigger expression, which is the film itself, then you have succeeded.